good. Uh, easy. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Coach Rick, we hear coaches say all the time how difficult it is for guys to come into a program on the offensive line if they haven't been developed there for yeah. three or four years. What does it say about not just you, but the guys around you that you've been able to be so successful the way you've come? Yeah, I think a lot of that is just about being open with each other, um, you know, talking through things. Like, even in spring ball, you know, I was hurt, so I wasn't able to participate, but even just, like, talking through how they usually block certain things in certain situations with, like, different linebacker alignments and stuff like that. Um, I think just the fact that everyone can be open with each other and talk through things is, was the biggest aspect of how, you know, we were still able to be pretty successful this year, even with me not being in spring ball and my first year in the program. So what was the biggest challenge for you, and how did you deal with that? Um, Biggest challenge was probably like obviously not having a spot like going into camp. Um, you know, being hurt in spring ball, not being able to show everyone what I like, what I could do, um, and really like having a lot of question marks on the center position on the team. Um, you know, in my mind, I obviously thought like, like I, I, I thought I feel like I was the guy from day one, but obviously you still have to go out and prove it. Um, but you know, that was probably the biggest challenge was just like that first three weeks in camp, just earning that spot, and then just from and then. You know, running with it from there. So, how close are you guys? Just off pretty close, honestly, from top to bottom too. Like not just a ones or twos thing or anything. Like you got like the freshman walk-on guys. We're boys with all of them. You know, like it's it's a pretty close room and it's a great thing to be a part of. I always hear with football players, there's like a share of suffering. How is that true for the offensive line that brings it together? Yeah, um, <laughs> it's pretty true in every aspect. I mean, all. It's kind of that way with every position group on the team, um, especially with everything that's gone on this year in the media and like, um, you know, all the off the field stuff that we've kind of just been able to rally around together. Um, but I mean, an offensive line room is offensive line room basically anywhere. I feel like um, it kind of is similar mindset <laughs> at any program. You know, it's always the big guys who are always just doing, <laughs> kind of getting through practice, trying to do whatever they want, a little grittiness to them. So um, it's been a great thing to be a part of. Coach Harbaugh is known for his khakis and cleats on the sidelines. If you were a coach, what would your game day fit be on the sidelines? Um, I don't know. That's a tough one. Probably something with probably something with some comfortable shoes, so my feet don't get sore walking around and running around and stuff. But if I had to choose, I mean, I like the cleats thing too for slippery games, especially up north in the Big Ten. Um, probably just some. Air Force Ones and some khakis, I guess, and a polo. <laughs> Pretty simple. Obviously, a quarterback's got to have a good relationship with his line. How does JJ show his appreciation of you guys? Yeah, he did that from day one, honestly. Uh, I think back in the spring, he took us out to Ruth Chris, and that was like before, you know, me, Miles, LD, like, you know, guys who played this year weren't even, like, he didn't even see us play yet, but he, like, had the trust in us. Like, he took the whole room out to dinner um, and paid for everything. You know, it was a huge testament to who he is as a person and a player um, and how he treats us as a, and the rest of the team. Um, you know, he's a great leader for us and a great person that you want to have back there and want to protect. So he does that all the time. Yeah, obviously what happened was super unfortunate, um, but it was like even in the moment <clears throat> at the Ohio State game when everyone was chanting his name, like it was pretty crazy because as linemen, like you're not really used to notoriety and like everyone like hearing hearing your name or knowing your name and whatnot, but like with Zach, it was almost as if he was like the starting quarterback, like everyone knew who he was, the whole stadium was behind him and obviously throughout the past few weeks, like he's just been getting plenty of attention, all these awards and stuff. So it's, it's, it's great for him to be able to uh, to lean on that, especially since the season ended early for him. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's obviously a huge loss for us, but at the same time, like, it's next man up mentality. Um, you know, we got plenty of guys in the room that can take his spot. Um, obviously, you can't really replace a Zach Zinner, but you can damn sure try, so. From 
either like a fan base or even just like within a team room? Have you ever seen a lineman embrace like that? No, <laughs> I have not. Um, I think linemen have a lot of respect, like within their certain programs, you know, um, among the coaching staff or other players, or whatever it may be. But from a bigger perspective outside the program, that was pretty special to see. Drake, with Coach being former quarterback and offense really being his specialty in that front, is there any wisdom that he is able to kind of give to the offensive line that you hadn't heard before? Where it's like, oh, he actually understands the position, the quarterback, and protection and all that. Yeah, nothing that nothing super specific that sticks out like in the moment, but like he always is popping his head in the door in the meeting rooms back in Ann Arbor, saying something about a certain play or how it should be blocked. Um, and also, definitely, he's definitely involved, and in, like even just it could be the certain like the smallest thing possible, like what we how we want to block a reverse or something that like really has no uh, relationship to what the quarterback is doing, but just like the general play. Um, overall, so he's always given good points, and especially if someone's struggling with certain some like a certain technique or something, like he'll come in and you know give us some pointers. So he's definitely involved in us. So I know you guys had a bit of a history lesson the other day about Michigan in the Rose Bowl. Yes. What, what surprised you coming out of that? Um, well, the first one was like the first. I think the first Rose Bowl ever was a forty-nine to zero over Stanford, which is my opposite, which was my old school. So I was like. Oh, well, that's a that's a good stat to start off with. So it was a little uh, a little funny for me. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, obviously I grew up watching the Rose Bowl, and as everyone has or everyone does, I should say. Um, but yeah, it's it's just great to be here, honestly, and be a part of this history. What was it like being at Lowry's last night? It was pretty sweet. Yeah, <laughs> uh, great experience for sure. They had the whole place decorated, and um, they were on top of it. So it was pretty pretty cool to be a part of that too. Yesterday we heard from some of Bama's offensive players. They said that with all the kind of paranoia around the sign stealing stuff, that they switched from their tablets to only watching film in groups. Roman just told us that you guys also turned the tablets off and have only been watching in groups. Is that yeah. impacted game prep and how you plan for this game? Not really. Um, you know, it's pretty similar to them. I mean, I'm sure they're watching plenty of tape as well, even without it. But we still have the main computer systems down in the uh, the meeting rooms in the hotel that we can go watch. Um, you know, I was down there with Crip last night, just going over practice and stuff like that. So, I mean, we're still able to get it in. It's not really a huge deal, especially it's kind of nice that we're all in the same spot in the hotel. So all it takes is an elevator ride and a couple hundred yards of steps, and you're you're right back in it. So. I think you're watching more film, less film, the same amount. I would say the same amount. I've kind of had a little process <clears throat> um, as I've gone into game weeks. I mean, obviously this is this preparation has been longer, so I guess overall you'd probably say more. Um, but throughout game, throughout the game week, I've always had like a pretty similar process on who we're playing. Um, so I kind of just stick with that and let it roll. Has this year kind of been surreal? You go from Stanford and you know, just trying to get to that sixth win and compete for bowl, to now you're 13 and 0 yeah. conference championship, and it still almost feels like that's not enough, and it's onto the playoff national championship. Yeah, it has, it has been a lot, uh, very surreal this year. Um, obviously, a huge shift in culture and um, just football in general, not just like within the program, but outside the program as well. The attention the program gets, um, the attention the head coach gets with Coach Harbaugh. He's always in the media doing something, um, always writing about him as well. But I think <clears throat> the biggest, the biggest thing was. Uh, I think I've always had a winning mentality, so I think it was just nice to, <clears throat> excuse me, it was nice to just be a part of, like, be a part of a program that everyone else had the same thing. Um, and not, and every, not, not to say that Stanford didn't have that, but that it just shows more in the win column here, so. You're a little banged up for the Big Ten Championship game, you feeling, feeling better? <laughs> yeah, I was a little banged up. I feel good now, though. The four weeks were much needed, so it's nice. Yeah. Going up against this Alabama defense, what have you seen the pass rushers are? It seems like every year reloading. Yeah. Fifteen's uh, going to be high draft pick. What do you, mm -hmm. what you expect now? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously they're super big, super fast, super physical. Um, I mean, they really have everything you want in the defense. You know, they chase they chase after the ball. Um, you know, they're always getting extra hits on the ball carries and stuff. You know, it's a great challenge for us, and you wouldn't really want anything less in an opponent, especially in this caliber of a game. 
Um, cause so our best is going to be needed. So we're, gonna, we're excited to get out there and show everyone what we can do. Has there been a message from your coaches about this is what a Nick Saban defense kind of looks like? I know he's the head coach, but he's got his hands. Um, to, to a degree, yeah. Um, I mean, we've gone back and watched old Georgia clips um, from even his predecessors who've been other places and stuff like that. Um, just getting a feel of how they usually like to call things. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's that's not really a huge emphasis. It's more just taking what we see on tape and applying it to whatever play call we have. So. What was your reaction? My last one is that Georgia game. A lot of people thought Georgia was going to go in as the number one seed and essentially you guys are Georgia. And for them to take them down, what was your guys' reaction? Yeah, obviously it's just a testament to how good of a program and team Alabama is, you know. Um, Georgia was top dog for a while. I think it was, what, like 20-something games they won in a row. Um, I mean, it had, to, it had to end eventually, so, I mean, more the power to Alabama for doing that. But, you know, now we got to be out there and do it ourselves. So you got to be the top dog. I don't know. That's tough. That's probably the hardest question. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to get back to you on that. One, honestly. What's your why? My why. I mean, probably, probably just my family name and just like where I'm from. Um, you know, I feel like I've always like took took into the fact that you know I came from Highlands Ranch High School. It wasn't really super like strong high school program, not many a lot of guys go D1 or play college ball out of. And those who do usually make it pretty far. So I think that's like my why. Um, just like, you know, putting on for my hometown really. Um, at the same time, like just for the love of the game, like over the years, like I've just grown to love football more and more and just like enjoy, simply just enjoy playing it. So that's kind of my why. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely envisioned it a little bit, um, especially after they lost that Fiesta Bowl game against TCU. Um, I knew that the team would be hungry, and it kind of excited me um, even more so. And I also knew that the following year was like one of the playoff games of this year, I guess I should say, was the Rose Bowl game. And I've always wanted to play at the Rose Bowl, especially being like a Pac-12 guy. Um, so obviously, like it's been on my on our minds the whole year, and I knew exactly what I was getting into uh, a year ago when I came here, and it's been. It's been great to see it all play out. How is the, how is the, like, the week kind of compared to maybe what you thought it was? <clears throat> is, it, is it kind of the same or does it feel a lot different being here? Yeah, it definitely feels a little different being here. Um, I'd say I'm a pretty routine-based guy, so all my game weeks pretty much look the exact same. Um, but here, obviously, you're taking buses to practice. You're doing all these activities and stuff, so it's a little bit different. Um, but at the same time, like, that's, that's part of it. You know, That's part of the experience here, and um, it's great to get that in. So. <laughs> yeah, I guess I could say that, yeah. Um, I just say the Pac-12 guy mainly because, like, that was where I was recruited. I mean, obviously I spent four years there, and, like, the whole goal of Stanford was to always get to the Rose Bowl and win. You know, that was kind of like the MO. Um, but now, obviously, Big Ten, I guess, yeah, I can call myself a Big Ten guy now, too. Do you feel like the physicality of the Big Ten maybe prepares you for a college football playoff? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, maybe not just – maybe not exactly just the physicality, but um, – just the size of the size of like the front seven on defense, I think, is a big um, was a big change and also a big challenge for me as well, um, and also a big uh, help in our preparation throughout the whole year for a game like this. So. How 
was this week been as a, as a transfer coming into this? I know some of your teammates have done this two years in a row, but what's this whole process been like with the, the playoff? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's definitely been a uh, it's definitely been new for me. Obviously, it's my first bowl game, <clears throat> um, but it's been it's been good. I'm just kind of embracing all of it, you know, trying to take it all in. Um, and as we get closer to the game, just kind of start to hone in on that. Um, but just trying to really just trying to compartmentalize my mind of when you know when we're doing football stuff, be locked in on football. When we're doing other activities, you know, just enjoy it with my teammates and uh, the time being. So, is this watching Alabama on film? Is this one of the better teams' defenses that you think you'll be able to? Played. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're they're stacked from top to bottom. You know, they got guys everywhere, obviously, um, as any team would in the college football playoff. Um, but yeah, I think that you know, I was telling some other reporters that I think that they run the ball very well. Um, they play hard. You know, it's just um, a testament to who they are as a team and who, how they're coached. But at the same time, we got to match it and we got to beat them. So um, I'm excited. So when you came here, this is kind of what you had in mind. Is now yeah. that it's here. <laughs> Uh, is it hard to believe? Is it uh, what you expected? Um, yeah, it's, I mean, not necessarily hard to believe, but it's definitely what I expected, but it's just like kind of crazy to actually be here now. You know, it's kind of something that you manifest after a while and over the course of a year. Um, obviously, it's a long time to be thinking about certain things, but now that we're here, it's it's pretty awesome. So. Almost across the board, your offensive line are graduates. Like, yeah. this is a deep experience group. I know you've had some changes, but mm -hmm. what does the experience show up like on the field? Yeah, a lot of it is just like I think a lot of it's just on the fly. Um, when certain blitzes or run blitzes happen or certain stunts um, that may take place in the course of a play, um, even if our communication isn't great during it, uh, that's where the experience factor can come in and help you know pick up certain things without everyone being on the same page because everyone just like knows what they're doing. Um, so I think that's probably the best aspect of having a bunch of old guys on the line. We know you're banged up going into the Iowa game. How are you now? Has this month been for you? Yeah, it's been it's been very much needed. Um, yeah, I had a high ankle sprain going to the Iowa game, but I feel much better now. Um, so it was definitely the four weeks were great for me. Um, so it's been awesome. What's it been like seeing Zach put in the same amount of work he's been doing, unable to obviously play, but still be with you guys with everything with you guys in practice? How's that been inspiring? It has been pretty inspiring, actually. He's already like walking and stuff without crutches, which is pretty crazy considering like five weeks ago his leg was in half so like it was uh yeah he's definitely healing pretty fast from what it seems like um obviously i don't know what the x-rays and stuff show but i mean yeah he's been he's always in the training room with me doing it doing whatever he needs to so we're always talking still and he's still part of the still part of the room just as much as anyone else so some new faces in this game up front how do you feel like practice is going can you give me an example of like well we've really come together in a way or what's it look like um yeah i think just our game plan in general I mean, uh, obviously, every, obviously every team falls in love with their game plan going into every game, but, I mean, that's something you got to trust in, especially in your coaches especially. You know, we have full trust in Coach Moore and full trust in each other to execute the game plans um, and the plays that we're going to call. So, I mean, that's, that's probably the most important thing, just getting the reps underneath ourselves and the looks that we need and um, just going out there and executing the plays. So you're saying center is possible for Monday? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'd probably say that we just got to pass off the games well. You know, they're very, they're very strong, powerful, they're fast. Um, I'm sure they're going to have some new blitzes drawn up for us. Um, but I think just we just got to work together inside out um, and make sure that we're not screwing each other over in the pass protection game and just, you know, working together as one. So. How would you say your blitz recognition and your ability to help identify stuff has increased or what's improved? Yeah, I think it's it's helped a lot this year that I'm able to draw, you know, to kind of drive some of the protections. You know, some of them aren't really my call, but at the same time, you know, JJ does a good job of pointing stuff out that he sees, um, and our tackles have done a good job of pointing stuff out that they see too, because I can't see all the stuff on the edge sometimes that they might be able to see in a two-point stance. Um, so I think just the communication aspect has just gotten better over the course of the year, whereas like the first couple of games we had a few issues with it, um, but now that's all cleaned up. We've We've been pretty solid. How does this defensive line measure up to lines you maybe seen throughout the season? Yeah, I think that they're probably definitely one of the best. Um, you know, definitely from a size and strength perspective, um, probably the best. Um, and then you combine that with their speed and the linebackers that they have. Um, you know, it's definitely the best defense we've probably faced. Um, so 
just got to know that going into the game and be prepared for it and go play our balls off. What do they do, Last one. What do, they do well and what are you trying to keep that? How do you keep it? Um, I mean, it's kind of just like any any defense, really. I mean, they kind of do everything well, obviously, but um, you kind of just got to stay on the double teams as much as you can. I think at the point of attack, that's where we're going to have to win the most. Um, you know, I th that's really it. <laughs> like, I don't really know how to answer that question, to be honest. You just got to beat them with, you know, with what they got, so. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome.